Hello everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about organo copper chemistry. Especially, I'm going to discuss about Gilman's reagent and its synthetic applications. So this video is the continuation of previous video where we have started the discussion of this Gilman's reagent and its synthetic applications. So this Gilman's reagent, Gilman's reagent is generally, generally dialkyl lithium cuprate, dialkyl or diorganyl lithium cuprate is called Gilman's reagent. So as we know the percentage of ionic character of this metal is very less. So that is the reason the attached organyl, organyl group of our attached carbon of this co uh, copper is acts as weak nucleophile, weak nucleophile so that it generally involves in two different type of reactions that is substitution reactions and another one is conjugative, conjugative addition reactions conjugative addition reactions so in previous video we have started the discussion of this substitution reactions of this gilman's reagent and this gilman reagent generally involved in the reaction of displacement of halides in organal halides or organo halides which is also called as cori house synthesis and uh, this gilman reagent involved in substitution reactions with the allyl halides and uh, this Gilman reagent also involved in the substitution reactions with the alkenyl halides. So in this video, let us continue the synthetic applications of this Gilman's reagent that is substitution reactions. Come to the other application that is, that is the application of Gilman's reagent that is nucleophilic displacement of other living groups other living groups so in the previous video we have discussed about the organyl halides allyl halides that is alkyl halides allyl halides alkenyl halides now let us discuss about other nucleophilic displacement reactions for example, if you treat any alcohols like primary and secondary alcohols, primary and secondary alcohols, for example, I am taking primary alcohol, if you treat this primary alcohol with the P-toluene sulfonyl chloride, P-toluene sulfonyl chloride, which generally gives you tosylates, tosylates. As we know, these sulfonates these sulfonates are very good very good leaving groups so very good leaving groups and they can involve in nucleophilic displacement reactions so when you use cuprate reagents for example if you use Gilman's reagent since this Gilman reagent has a weaker nucleophile this can displace this tosylates this can displace this tosylate and the nucleophilic displacement of this tosylate gives you again the hydrocarbon. So this is also a kind of application with the Gilman's reagent. For example, if you take a substrate which is having a good leaving group that is tosylate and treat with the, the Gilman's reagent as we know the nucleophilic substitution reactions with the Gilman reagent generally follow a SN2 reaction so that is the reason this tosylate present at the endo position so this weaker nucleophile at the opposite position so that means exo position so this is the application of the Gilman's reagent for example if we have
another example which is having a good living group that is tosylate and treat this tosylate with the Gilman's reagent. This Gilman reagent has a methyl nucleophile which attack onto this electrophilic carbon, electrophilic carbon, and we gives you a substituted, substituted product, substituted product. So these kind of substitution reactions we can observe where the tosylates which are good living groups in the substrates. As we discussed previously, allylic halides, allylic halides also undergo nucleophilic displacements with this organo copper reagents. For example, this allyl halide when you treat with the dimethyl lithium cuprate dimethyl lithium cuprate this methyl nucleophile generally attack at the end of the pi system that means it involves a sin 2 prime reaction by the loss of that is expulsion of this uh, leaving group which gives you a rearranged allyl product Likewise, you can also treat this Gilman's reagent with the allylic cube allylic acetates, allylic acetates where this acetates also good living groups. For example, let us take an allylic tosylate, so allylic acetate. And treat this one with the Gilman reagent. So, as we know, this weaker nucleophile involved in sin 2 prime nucleophilic displacement reaction and simultaneous expulsion of this good living group acetate gives you gives you a allyl rearranged products. So likewise we can do the nucleophilic the displacement reactions with the Gilman's reagent. Let us consider another example where this substrate has a good living group that is acetate. When you treat this acetate with the Gilman's reagent, so generally this Gilman reagent involve in sin 2 prime displacement reaction the simultaneous attack of this nucleophile and simultaneous expulsion of this acetate gives you a rearranged product you can also perform the nucleophilic displacements with the proper gel proper gel acetates proper gel acetates so earlier we have discussed about the allylic acetates now we can use a proper gel acetate where acetate is a good living group treat this proper gelic acetate with the Gilman's reagent where this Gilman reagent involving the sin 2 prime reaction and simultaneous expulsion of this acetate gives you allines allines as the products can also consider other examples like OAC which is a acetate good living group this is a proper gel acetate proper gel acetate treat with this organo copper reagent where this R minus weaker nucleophile attack at this end of this proper gel system and simultaneous expulsion of this acetate gives you
and leads is the noise. So here this nucleophilic displacement of in the case of nucleophilic displacement of other leaving groups we have discussed about the uh, the reaction of organolithium cuprates with the tosylates since tosylates are good leaving groups so the weaker nucleophile also reacts with this and the nucleophilic displacement reaction gives you hydrocarbons whereas you can also treat this Gilman's reagent with the allylic halides and allylic acetates too since they are good leaving groups this Gilman reagent involves in SN2 prime reaction and gives you allylic rearranged products you can also treat this Gilman's reagent with the proper gel acetates where this reaction produces allines as a major products so this is all about the nucleophilic displacement reactions with the Gilman's reagent since it has a weaker nucleophile coming to the other application so this Gilman reagents also reacts with the other substrates that is acid halides acid halides so the reaction of Gilman reagent with the acid halides so the reaction of Gilman's reagent so when you treat with this acid halides for example acid chloride you will treat this generally it involves in nucleophilic substitution reaction and gives you ketones as the main products so what is the product here when you treat this Gilman reagent with the acid halides generally gives you ketones ketones as the main products for example treatment of this acid chloride with the a Gilman reagent so generally this Gilman reagent that means this weak, weaker nucleophile weaker nucleophile only attack on this electrophilic carbon and simultaneous expulsion of this chloride gives you a ketone ketone is a product so in this in this way you can prepare alpha beta unsaturated ketones for example if you have two functionalities in the same substrate you have alkyl halide and acid halide so when you treat this substrate with the one mole of one mole of Gilman reagent so first the reactivity according to reactivity order so acid acyl halide or acid halide first reacts with this Gilman's reagent then the Argano halide so one mole of this uh, Gilman reagent gives you ketones suppose the same substrate if you treat two moles of two moles of Gilman's reagent so here the nucleophilic displacement of both halides and acid halides takes place and gives you the substituted product so this is the way when you have the substrate with the two functionalities you have to find the reactivity order of the Gilman's reagent so which is more reactive towards the Gilman's reagent suppose in another case
So if you consider this example where this acid added has on saturation at alpha beta position. So when you treat this alpha beta unsaturated acid halide, this Gilman's reagent does not involve or does not attack at this beta position. Instead, it directly attack at this electrophilic carbon of this acid halide and gives you ketone ketone as a main product so direct attack on this carbonyl carbon in this acid halide you will observe in the case of alpha beta unsaturated acid chloride so this is one kind of important synthetic application with the gilman reagent gilman reagent in the case of alpha beta unsaturated acid chloride it won't attack at this beta position instead it attack direct uh, directly onto this electrophilic carbonyl carbon and gives you ketone as the main product so in this way also you can prepare alpha beta unsaturated ketones so this is also a kind of application so that means the Gilman reagent when you treat with this acid halides generally it produce ketones as the products coming to the other application where the Gilman reagent also reacts with the epoxides reacts with epoxide. since Gilman reagent contains a weak nucleophile it can involve in nucleophilic substitution reactions or substitution reactions so coming to the epoxides epoxides has an electrophilic carbon where this carbon both carbons are same this carbon connected to oxygen that is more alternative atom so this carbon gets positive charge so when you treat this epoxide with the Gilman's reagent what happens the ring opening of this epoxide takes place by the attack of this weaker nucleophile of this organo lithium cuprate so as you know that The reaction of this epoxides with the Gilman reagent generally produces the alcohols. Alcohols as the products. So what kind of mechanism involved in this? You can see this epoxide has an electrophilic carbon and this Gilman reagent with its weak nucleophilic character attack with this electrophilic carbon and open the ring and produce alcohols as the main products main product this is unsubstituted epoxide suppose when you have a substituted epoxide substituted epoxide this substituted epoxide has two different type of carbons one is more substituted carbon that means two electrophilic carbons one is more substituted electrophilic carbon and less substituted electrophilic carbon generally gilman reagent preferably attack at the less substituted less substituted electrophilic carbon in epoxides which opens the ring which opens the ring and produce alcohols and produce alcohols so the reaction of Gilman reagent with epoxides generally produce alcohols when you have a substituted substituted epoxides generally Gilman's reagent preferably attack less less substituted electrophilic carbon side the reaction of this Gilman reagent with the epoxide always takes place in a to manner that means this nucleophile is generally attacked at the less hindered side of the epoxide for example if you take an epoxide and treat with the Gilman reagent so this Gilman reagent since it has a weaker nucleophile this attack at this electrophilic carbon and opens this ring in a to manner so it attacks at the electrophilic carbon in a sinto manner that is the backside attack which produces alcohol produces alcohol 
both this R in the product, both this R and the OH are in anti position. That is anti position. That means reopening takes place in anti periplanar. Anti periplanar manner. That is why you are ending up with the trans product. Trans product. Suppose if you have allylic epoxides, consider allylic epoxides and proper gelic epoxides. So what happens? What happens when they react with the Gilman's reagent? Let us consider allylic epoxides. What is the meaning of this allylic epoxide? Is the epoxide which is having unsaturation at alpha beta position alpha beta position so this is called allylic epoxide when you treat this allylic epoxide with the gilman's reagent so generally this gilman's reagent preferably attack at the end of this phi system which opens the epoxide ring in anti sn2 type mechanism Let us this let us discuss this mechanism in detail by taking another example. For example, I am taking this allylic epoxide or alpha beta unsaturated epoxide or unsaturated epoxide. When you treat with this in with the Gilman reagent, Gilman reagent. So generally. This Gilman's reagent, when it attacks at the end of the spy system, produces allylic alcohols. Allylic alcohols. But during this mechanism, we can trap this allylic alcohol in it. And we can treat this with the different kind of secondary substrates. For example, for example, let's take the same substrate. And treat with the Gilman reagent. What happens? This Gilman reagent attack at this end of pi system in anti SN2 type. Anti SN2 type. produce so lilic alcoholinate Now you can trap this allylic alcohol and react with the and treat with the MCPBA metachloroperpentaic acid which gives you epoxide.
So here is the formation of epoxide takes place from the top position because of the chelation effect of this alcohol. Alcohol which is top position and which forms chelation with this metachlorofurbenzoic acid and gives you epoxide in the top position. So that means during the reaction of Gilman's reagent with the alpha beta unsaturated epoxides generally we can perform the formed perform the other reactions with the formed allylic alcoholinate allylic So this allylic alcoholate produces hydroxy epoxide, which produces hydroxy epoxide, which contain which contains four stereogenic centers, four stereogenic centers. So likewise, we can use this Gilman's reagent to produce different kind of stereogenic centers in the product by treating with the unsaturated epoxides. Suppose. If you take another example like this allylic epoxide or alpha beta unsaturated epoxide may have extension extending conjugation with another double bond then when you treat this molecule with the Gilman reagent so generally this Gilman reagent that means weaker nucleophile which attacks at the terminal position of the conjugate system and open the ring opens the ring so that means when you have extended conjugation extended conjugation in this alpha beta unsaturated epoxides generally this Gilman's region preferably attack at the terminal terminal end of the conjugated system so this is very important one and consider another example where proper gelic epoxides consider proper gelic epoxide and treat this proper gelic epoxide with the Gilman's reagent and this Gilman's reagent attack at the end of the pi system and opens the ring opens the ring so this is also a kind of application where you can open the ring of the epoxides with the Gilman's reagent so you can also consider different kind of applications for example for this epoxide you can treat with the cyanocuprates cyanocuprates nucleophilic attack nucleophilic attack of this gil this uh, organocuprate towards this electrophilic carbon in SN2 manner SN2 manner which generally produce the trans product trans product so here what you are observing is the stereo specific stereo specific SN2 opening of this cyclic epoxides generally produces trans hydroxy alkylated products. Trans hydroxy alkylated products majorly. So, this is another application of Gilman's reagent. So, these all cases, what are all the cases? Alkyl halides, allyl halides alkenyl halides and then epoxides 
and nucleophilic displacement of uh, tosylates. So these all cases are acid halides. These all cases comes under the substitution reactions of the Gilman's reagent. So in the next video, we will continue the other application of this Gilman reagent that is conjugative addition which is very important reaction for the formation of CC bond in organic synthesis. <coughs> We will discuss the stereochemistry involved in this conjugate addition of this Gilman's reagent with the different substrates in the next video. Thank you.